All right, so there are renewed calls to do something about America's gun uh, epidemic after the mass shooting this week at a Super Bowl parade in Kansas City that left at least one person dead. Um, with that one person dead, 22 others injured. Two minors have been charged and are currently being held at a juvenile detention center in connection with the shooting. It all comes as a wave of gun safety laws took effect across the country at the beginning of this year after 2023 ended with more mass shootings than days, believe it or not, having now the second highest number on record. The Gun Violence Archive has already tracked 51 mass shootings this year alone. And of course, I do not need to remind you that we are only in the middle of February. And as the Trace notes, a newsroom dedicated to covering gun violence, uh, these shootings happen so frequently in America that we are left feeling that they can happen anywhere at any time and without any warning. And that's because they actually do. The fact that mass shootings are still taking place uh, despite the presence of police forces and even the scattered gun safety laws that do exist signals how deeply rooted this issue is in this country and the work that lies ahead. Joining me now to discuss this epidemic and more are Attorneys General Aaron Ford of Nevada and Kwame Raoul of Illinois. Gentlemen, it's great to have both of you with us. Thank you so much for making time on this important uh, topic. Um, Attorney General Raoul, I'd like to start with you because I know that gun safety is personal for you as one of your own employees survived the Highland Park mass shooting back in 2022. Uh, talk to us a little bit about what efforts you are leading in your state to address this issue. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, well, we know that uh, the guns that are being used in gun violence in uh, the communities most harmed by gun violence are neither manufactured there, legally sold there, uh, or legally transferred into uh, the hands of those who are perpetrating this gun violence. So one of the things, you mentioned Kansas City. We partnered with the city of Kansas City to sue a uh, to sue the ATF for relicensing a gun manufacturer that was making cheap guns that were known to be used in crimes, carjackings, robberies, and so forth. And we were successful in getting the license of that gun manufacturer revoked. That was a manufacturer that was specifically making guns, not for law-abiding gun owners, for, but, but for people uh, that they knew would do harm with them. We also partnered uh, with, with every town and we created a crime gun tracing platform so we can trace the flow of guns. We, in, we prosecute uh, gun trafficking cases, but we need the data to make sure that we can track down those who are trafficking guns from other states into the state of Illinois and into the city of Chicago, which is uh, well known for its gun violence, unfortunately. And, and, and so our, our efforts towards gun violence recognize that there should never have been a place where we expected gun violence uh, to occur. Now, uh, we are all up in arms because it can occur anywhere, but we've tolerated for, for decades gun violence happening in predominantly black and brown communities. Right. And uh, we to tolerated the things that uh, aided that along. Yeah, it's true. And it's also uh, focused in the urban cities that people seem to think, oh, if it's happening in the cities, it's not my problem. Um, Attorney General Ford, in 2022, you secured, I believe, uh, $400,000 to go towards educating and training programs for your state's red flag law. Talk to us about uh, the progress that you've seen with this initiative and other steps that your office is taking to protect your constituents and if we can expand it to other states. Yeah, well, first of all, thanks so much for uh, having uh, Kwame and I on every time I have an opportunity to uh, um, 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 serve on a panel with Kwame, uh, I'm delighted because I know we're going to be able to talk about some important stuff. Um, and you're right, we were able to secure $400,000 in the red flag training programs that we want to implement, and we are in the process of doing that. But that was just uh, another step in a long line of efforts that we've undertaken in Nevada to address gun violence issues, dating back to my days in the state Senate, where we championed background check legislation, um, where although my predecessor did not want to enforce the background check legislation that was passed, we were able to um, uh, get, get it um, authorized and, and enforced. Uh, bump stock legislation that we um, uh, passed in the aftermath of the October one shooting uh, is another example, and we now have litigation ongoing right now where we are attempting to ban ghost gun legislation, uh, ghost guns. Uh, we have legislation that passed. We've been able to uh, push back against some of the lawsuits against it, although we're still in court. And, uh, you know, although there have been some 
clearly misunderstandings around the prevalence of ghost guns by some in our state. Uh, we know that at least from 2000, the summer of 2020 to 2021, we had 250 of those mm. recovered by law enforcement uh, that had been uh, utilized in robberies or domestic violence or, or, or otherwise. And so uh, we're going to be working hard to ensure we can continue pushing back on the gun violence epidemic that we uh, see here in our state as well. Uh, Mr. Raul, earlier today, Democratic Congressman Maxwell Frost uh, spoke with my colleague Alex Witt about this issue. Take a listen to what he said. So we got a lot of work to do. There's been good work that's been done. The Bipartisan Safer Communities Act passed two years ago. We've seen, especially in big cities, that gun violence rates has actually come down a little bit. Uh, but we still have a lot of work to do because behind every number, there's a human, there's a person. What do you think it's going to take for us to see a larger impact on this issue, to see the number of mass shootings in this country uh, drastically drop? Is this something that can, can only be done at a state level or a local level, or do you think the federal government has a role and can play a role in drastically dropping this? Yes, I, I think it's got to be all hands on deck, and the, the federal government has to be involved. And I think to some extent, to, to a great extent, the federal government has been uh, involved under the Biden administration. And when I said earlier that I sued ATF, we're a great partner with ATF. They have lent their crime gun intelligence uh, towards uh, uh, solving the problem, certainly within the city of Chicago. But in addition, the Department of Justice has embraced the fact that we've got to get to know the, the shooter. What I mean by that is there's nobody who came out of the womb with a gun in their hand and a heart to take their neighbor. We've got to intervene in the lives of people who are more likely to either be a victim or a perpetrator of gun violence. We're not going to simply do it by passing uh, gun laws or by, by way of enforcement. We got to realize we got to invest in communities and into the lives of people that would uh, be vulnerable to choosing gun violence or, or otherwise being a victim of gun violence. And Attorney General Ford, I'll give you the chance as well to, to weigh in on that. Do you think that there is a federal response here, a federal um, action that could be taken to drastically bring down these numbers, and especially in the current climate where Washington is so uh, broken, for lack of a better word, or, or polarized, to say, to say the least, on this issue? Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a federal response that's necessary and appropriate. I do uh, commend the Biden administration for undertaking those efforts. Uh, it does need he does need a Congress that's willing to undertake these as well. Uh, and so, you know, I, I commend again him for doing that. But we have yet more work to do. Uh, but as Kwame said, this is an all hands on deck approach. Just Friday, for example, I was at a panel discussion put on by well, a training rather put on by Every Town Moms Demand Action right. in Every Town, where candidates are uh, who, who are advocating for common sense gun response. Uh, uh, gun regulations are running for office. And that's part of what we have to do as well, get people in office who have a, an appropriate mindset about being responsible gun owners. And uh, that's another way that we can continue to drive down the occurrences of, of gun violence in our country. Yeah, it's a very important point to keep the political pressure on uh, members of Congress as well to get the right candidates in with the right mindset.